Alright, so here I have this compass, and I have a pretty funny idea on it. Alright, so this thing is front wheel drive, and it sucks, no matter where you are. So, I'm gonna try and cut it a few inches past the driver's side, if I your side was one. Got this vibratory tool here, I'm hoping I can just follow this line, and then build a bump that far away. Right? This bumper isn't doing anything. To go in here, it's the funniest thing ever. You go in here, and you can see right down there I have a house breaker. You flip a little switch, and you can see my big wires coming through, the negative batteries, negative battery terminals. These doors come off with simple two bolts, just like the other one did. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. I'm not going to video it. So I've got the airbags down just enough to chop on my line. After four or five nice saw blades, I got just the roof done. Okay, so this back, it's all cut off. Got this uh, massive wooden nail blade, and dude, that big saw cut right through it. It was crazy. I should have videoed it. Okay, so we come around to the back, and I did what I wanted to do. I have the very back chopped off so it's in line with the tires. That way I can build something coming from right there, around, and all the way around. What I wanted to do was move the wheelbase up, but I didn't do that. I wanted to be like that Jeep, but it's close enough. So, I still have to take out these airbags, because I don't want them in here. So what I'm going to try and do here is have... Two pieces equal in length on the sides. All right, so now I'm not bringing that thing in anymore because I added a wrench welded across it. So, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, and then try and weld some sort of tow hook across the metal. All right, so it may not look like anything now, and it probably won't ever look like anything. But, I just touched that with some paint, because this metal's, metal that I'm mounting to is so thin that it could rust pretty easily. And then down there, I just have some chicken wire taped up underneath the very bottom of the radiator. So, I gotta do some snow sloveling. Somehow we got 17, 16 inches of snow. But I'm gonna have a bar coming across right there. And then two diagonal bars coming down around the shock absorber area. And this welding blanket's here because the fuel 
Phillips right there. So. so before this bar is welded in across the top, I'm gonna wedge this in here. That way I can weld to that. It's hard to get a good strong thing going across. So I got it nice and covered. Well, sorta of nice and sorta of covered. All right, so you can still see the smoke, but I cut this here at first, so I welded that back together the best I could. And um, on this other side, I got that side welded not well. And then I, the main structural thing is an Allen wrench in there welded onto this plate. The rest of it's all kind of bogus. But see how good the welds are from the Allen wrench onto this thing? So I think that'll hold, especially if I tie it into this a little bit more. So this bar is tacked in, but I think I want to cut it at an angle and weld it in between both of these, giving it like a pushing force. That would probably give it a lot more strength. So this belt weld or brace is 100% welded. Uh, I do got to do some welding from that to here a little bit more because I don't know if you guys can see in the time lapse. My dad did over here because I can't weld the thin metal very well. So he kind of told me what to do. He did that and that to the thin metal. But then if we come up here, oh, I added these two braces right onto the roof. And then I welded this guy in into the Allen key and into that and then I welded it onto that so there's like a big gap that's why the welds aren't the greatest but they're good this thing it's solid it's moving the whole car then I'm hoping the roof is a little bit stronger than it was I should probably add more to tie it in right here I might add a few more wrenches I have so many of these in some spots I welded through but I was able to weld to it a little bit better is in. That one I got pretty good.
this bar is in and later on I have a bar coming from around here down to there just to make sure this doesn't smash down into there now I'm gonna build my bumper so I'm gonna tie these two points in to each other Alright, so down here, this side is a lot further in because when I cut the whole back off, nothing was measured. So it kind of screwed me up now, but what I'm going to try and do is bring this in this spot out the same exact uh, length and then weld a bar going across and potentially all the way around the tires. So first, we have to get this going in straight. Okay, so here we have the close to finished product. I still have a few more things to do, like maybe find a new tire for it. And I gotta paint the rest of it. I ran out of paint here. But I think it's kind of cool. This is what I did with my fuel fill up. I had an adapter here and just tied to the front. I was actually able to paint the front of it a little bit. It's funny. Very funny. Everything still works on it. I mean, it runs. So what we're doing here is cutting this to try and move this out because it bent when I hit something. is from 15 and 12 and a half. So that's two and, two and a half inches that it's wrong. So it, this is how far away it used to be from one point and now it's 18 inches instead of that which is what it's on the other side where it's not bent so we're gonna weld that in. We cut the control arm and bent it so that's kind of what's gonna happen. A little bit over here too you know and I added these fenders this one's not solid yet, the other one's solid. Because the mud got all in here on the first test drive. Like right in the parking lot out here. So we have straps coming from the car to the two post lift because we could lift it up and tip it over it. Because there's no back weight. All right, so the first time I got this thing, I ran into a rock and bent this whole panel. Up. and right now it's hitting the motor and it also knocked the radiator out of place so I might put that back together I might bend it back out since that can't be touching and I would like to develop some sort of skid plate and hang up my exhaust all right so here I found a pretty good thing to hold up my exhaust off the original hanger so it can all still move I think that would work great so we'll tack that in and prep it and everything and then right here there's already this is a lawnmower shift linkage so i can put a little clip in over there okay so i have to cut the excess off of here but that's never going anywhere and i welded a little bit more of this the part we connect cut and connected the control arm so some of that my father did so now 
We're gonna see about skid plate and radiator situation. I completely forgot to video, but I spun this thing around and we used a lift to bend it out. <laughs> and I'll put it up on the lift to show you guys. So, now the wires aren't rubbing. Nothing's rubbing anymore. But I can't get the radiator back in because the radiator's all bent. So that's kind of pointless, but it's not touching the engine anymore. You can see just how much it was rubbing the plate and make something more for the radiator. So this radiator, we moved everything out to get bolted back together. Best we could. Alright, so because this thing made a pretty bad banging noise, I decided to weld the motor mounts. And on this motor mount right here, I ran out of welding gas, but it will work fine. Alright, so I think this thing's pretty much done here. Uh, it's all welded. And everything. Um, it's pretty fun. And funny. Oh. So here's the seat. Um, not sure what I want to do with seat belts or anything yet. I have the seat belts over there from the thing that I cut out, but I might do a ratchet strap. Another one, maybe, I don't know, maybe more coming like around from both of these points around you. Because you can still undo a ratchet strap pretty fast. Those seat belts, I can't get them unlocked again. Oh man, that's cool. So I can have the camera back there for somebody holding it. But here's a little tour of the inside. You got the radio and everything, which you'll eventually turn on. And in the center console, this car didn't come with a shift knob. I found it cutting it open because this, this handbrake it's a lot easier if you had this open so I just cut it uh, and it lights up different settings but first, second, third, fourth, fifth so. Some, this thing the, didn't have a headliner to begin with because I ripped it out it was full of mouse crap didn't find a dead mice yet though so I'm trying to get rid of the smell alright here I got the compass back home. I have it on the charger because it was starting slow. But I'm pretty sure it's starting slow because when I put in my uh, cutoff for the negative terminal or something, I'm pretty sure it's not getting enough power to the starter. It's some kind of bang noise it makes, if it. Here we have the farm jeep on its maiden road voyage. So you can see what it's like with the open cab design. Yeah, goat would probably fit back there. Hey, get the camera. Yeah, they ain't doing that. I guess you can't see them, but 
Raisin. Hey! Look at this! Come on, look at this! Hey! Yeah, you like that. Hey, buddy. Alright, so what kind of drive by you want me to do? Really hasn't been driven much since it was back halved. Better get out of the way, I don't feel safe here. And now he's got the steep uphill challenge. Just downshifted. Pretty sure he was in 10th gear. Dropped her down to nine. All right, so this thing's fixed. Let's do it to something else.